right, welcome to part two of our case knife uh, talk, if you will. Um, so we're going to go over a few of my knives as I promised. Uh, generally what I do when I'm going to handle my knives, I used to wear gloves. And I really don't like wearing gloves because you can't open up these old knives with gloves very well. So what I generally do is, mineral oil is the best, by the way. But I'm just having trouble locating some that I really want. Uh, but I, I use Ballastol. And I just spray a little on my hands. And it's, it's non-toxic, so it won't hurt you. And what that does is basically get a nice shield between your grease on your hands. And uh, you kind of just wipe down your hands with it, like so. And you can wipe your hands off. And basically, what that will do is limit your hand oils on your knives. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, where should we start? I have lots of different types of knives, as you can see. Um, I'm a real fan of the German ones. I think a lot of German knives are really nice. Um, but you can see that I do have some case knives in here. And one of the more popular ones is the trappers. Um, trappers are very uh, desirable, and that's because it's a very full size blade. And uh, it's just perfect for carry, if you really think about it. So let's take a look at this knife. Now, this one, now remember what I told you about the. Tang stamp, and I don't know if you guys can really see that. Let me see if I can bring that up there. That might work, but if it doesn't, oh well, sorry. Um, this is a Case USA, Case XX USA, and you can see it has the uh, lightning for the S. So this was made in the 80s, and it also has some dots towards the bottom that I know you guys can't see for sure. Um, this knife is actually really well really well made. Now if I'm going to pick up a knife from the 80s, or a current knife for that matter, I am going to hand pick it. Um, so, because there are some nice knives if you hand pick them. It's just the quality, the, the QA basically, the quality assurance was not very good. So, if I can pick up a knife and handle it, um, that's a uh, that's a bonus. Or if I can get a, another collector to look at it for me and then I purchase it from him, that's fine too. Uh, this is when they start gluing on the shields. All right. And I've heard people saying that that's really no big deal or it doesn't really bother them. Well, it's a cost cutting measure and I prefer not to have my shields glued on. I've gone through enough to enough garage sales to know that when you find a case knife that's really old and uh, and been abused that the, the the shields, if they're glued on, tend to fall off. And uh, in general, blades will last forever, especially if it hasn't been used. But for some reason, the shields tend to fall off in the abused knives. Not that I've ever abused my knives, but um, I prefer them to be riveted on. When you get a custom knife that costs about $800, they're riveted on. They're not glued on. I just feel glue doesn't have any part on being on any of my knives. Uh, everyone knows about the Sod Buster. Well, check this one out. This is a stag, and it was a, a, a commemorative set that was made. And let's see what this is. This is a Case XX USA, and it's got four dots. So let's date that with our little card here, okay? Okay, so case XX. So you'll find basically. Okay, so that's case XX, but it's a case XX USA. So it's 1965 to 1969. Okay, but that's not accurate because look, you got some dots down there. So you need to drop down one more and it'll say case XX USA and it'll show some dots. And they'll basically say what I read in part one, that in 1970, Case added 10 dots beneath the USA stamp, etc., etc. Each year, a dot was removed. So you have four dots there. Uh, four months, so it's what, 1974, I think. I just off the top of my head. But anyway, this is a really well-made knife. Uh, check, that, check out that stag. Isn't that beautiful?
I mean, how many of you guys wanted a uh, Sodbuster that was stag? Well, you could find these on eBay for, shoot, I've seen them go as low as 30 bucks. And they're built a lot better, but look at that. Isn't that cool? Look at that stag. That's gorgeous. Wouldn't that be cool to carry around? Real nice. The commemorative set also included a wood one. And this wood, I think it's, it looks probably like maybe beech wood. That one's really nice too. Look at that. That's sweet. And it also came with a synthetic green handle one, which is right there. Uh, not a big fan of that one, but hey, it's a set, and uh, the set comes with uh, uh, two, two boxes, uh, three, three boxes. Each one is boxed in its own uh, box, and it basically explains uh, what the commemorative set means, etc., etc. I have a case Mammoth Ivory. That's one of the newer ones but I handpicked that one. So let's just move on here. I wanted to give you a real good example of a current knife and I have done this before. Here is a current case knife. That is beautiful and uh, that's why a lot of people are like, man case knives are gorgeous. Well, <laughs> this knife right here was handpicked for me. Okay. And the individual that handpicked it had to go through an awful lot of knives to find one, which he felt was collector's grade. And see, this doesn't have a custom look, and it does still have the light feel um, of one of the newer knives. But look at the stag on that. It's beautiful. That naughty stag on there. It's gorgeous. You know, that's one of the newer ones. This is a Case XX made in the 90s there. Yep. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful knife. And you always want to wipe down your knives before you put them back. Just like so. Alright, let's go to the, some more knives that I have. Um... These are some of the older case knives I have, and what's the fun thing about collecting is you can find a lot of these at garage sales, and a lot of my older knives I paid less for than the new ones, and they're better. So that's what makes knife hunting so much fun. And not only that, is you pay like maybe $10 for a knife that's worth, you know, $50, $60, $100, which is really cool. Um, it, current quality... They have the ability to make some really gorgeous knives, but you're going to pay for them. These Tony Bowes series knives are amazing. Look at this lockback whittler. This thing actually locks back. Where's the thumb hole for this thing? There it is. I really preserve my knives, as you can see. Um, this is a lockback whittler. It's beautiful. It locks up gorgeous. There's no gaps or seams. Look at the thickness of that blade. It's ATS-34. What a cool knife to carry. Um, I picked this one up, for, I think, for $125. Uh, book value is over $300. And uh, it is just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. It's got a half stop. See the half stop? Half stop is an extra safety measure. How cool is that? Half stop. A lot of these newer knives, they don't have half stops. And that's because it's, that's an added feature that takes time to fit. Because when you have a half stop, it has to be flush on the back in that position and that position. So you have to fit the knife blade. And that takes more money, so you'd have to charge more for the thing. Look at that, it's a lock back, you unlock it just like so. Beautiful knife. Bone handle, I'm a real fan of bone. Handles, thank you, I said bone, yes. And uh, those are sweet. So those are the Tony Bowes knives over here. Current knife. Everyone says, well, boy, I got this gorgeous one. It was made in the 90s. It's got a glue-on shield. Dog go running. You don't know what the hell you're talking about, etc., etc. Well, hey, like I said before, you can find some really nice ones. This is another one that was hand-picked for me. 
uh, by a collector. And if you get a relationship with somebody on the, online where you can say, "Hey, look, if you get some really beautiful, if you get a really beautiful one in, I'll pay an extra ten bucks for it." And that's what I did. I think I paid ten dollars over book for this one, and you'll see why. Look at the stag on that. This is a current issued one. Now, I mean, look at the stag on that. That's just incredible. Look at how naughty and gnarly that is. Now, this is a knife that, yeah, if you purchased it, you'd open up the box and you'd be like, wow, this is great. Or you're going to open up this knife and say, wow, this really stinks. You know, the only... It's got a little bit of glue coming out from underneath the shield. It's another thing about glued on shields. I've gotten some that are just crooked with glue coming out, oozing out. But this is a real beautiful knife. Beautiful. And that's a current issue. Neat. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, <clears throat> I have one of my subscribers. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to name you by name, but uh, I have one of my subscribers mentioned that he, he wanted trappers. Well, I purchased these trappers, I think, for $80 a piece, if I remember right. And their book value is way over that. It's in the $300 range. Now, these were made in the 70s. They're the Dot series. Okay, so this one's about 19... Probably 1975 beautiful knives razor sharp they got the polished edges they used to polish the edge you know right after the factory gorgeous uh, they used to have a they have an etching on this one it says tested xx razor's edge and it is it's razor really nice they got the real powerful back springs beautiful bone handles look at that that's just gorgeous you can't you can't get this kind of quality today and that's because they make them differently. A different company makes them. Yeah, it's Case XX, but it's a different president. It's a different company. It's a it's 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 completely different. You know, Case in general makes some of the best knives. Has made some of the best knives in the history of cutlery. But you got to understand that there's been many people that own them. Look at that skin. Oh, look at that. That's sweet. You guys can see how polished that edge is. Gorgeous knife. This was in the 70s. You can, you can find these cheaper. Now, if you want a 70s knife that's cheaper, you don't go after the trappers. Because I'm telling you, these trappers are $300. Um, what you go after is the patterns that aren't quite as popular, like these little jack blades. This one uh, was made in the 70s. Okay? It's the Dot series of knives, 1974. And I picked this one up for 40 bucks on eBay. Unused. It's got one little worm of corrosion on it. But it is built beautifully. Real beautiful knife. And it's it just doesn't bring top dollar like, for instance, the Trappers do. But it's got some powerful back springs on there. Hold on a second. That's my. You gotta take your vitamins if you're gonna get these old knives. So I'll tell you what, it's got a half stop on it. Pops open like so. See, added feature and snap, snap. It's a beauty. The new ones usually don't snap like that. Now, I'm gonna get, of course. Oh, I get the. I get every new knife they make. I've got uh, every peanut color that they made in 1990. Well, that's great. I'm glad you like colors. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, if you like that. Um, all right. What's another one? Oh, I think I've showed this one off before. This one I picked up. Oh, boy, this one's gorgeous. This is a Case Tested XX. So let's date this one. Okay, on the blade it says, okay, case tested. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that. I hope that you 
can. Okay, so we'll go to our little card and say we're at a garage sale and we found that. Case tested XX 1920 to 1940. Okay, so this is a knife that's 90 years old, completely unused. It's got a main blade. Look at those little bolsters that it has on it. Isn't that cute? Um, How neat is that? Look at that stag. It's really nice. It's a beautiful knife. I know this video is long, but uh, if you enjoy case knives and looking over my collection with me, if you don't, turn it off. I know for a fact I'll get 12 negative thumbs down, though, because I have that. I have a troll following me ever since my Obama video. God forbid I say something wrong about wrong about Obama. Don't want to offend anybody. Um, oh, here's one that I picked up. This is a Case XX USA. So date it. We're gonna go in the 70s. Oh, actually, it's got no dots on it. Okay. So whoops. Case XX USA 1965 to 1969. Remember that. Part one, the book said that these are some of the most beautiful knives that they made, and I have to agree. This has a pure custom feel. I would compare this with some of my custom knives. I picked this up for 35 bucks on eBay. Real beautiful. You guys can see the, the bone handle on this. Let's see if I can zoom in on that for you. See if I can go like that. Gorgeous. Real beautiful knife. Half stop. Oh, think of that. Nice snap. They all had nice half stops and snap back in the old days. But like I said, cost reduction, they started getting rid of all that stuff. Uh, what's another one we could go over? These are the Bulldog knives I told you about. Oh, they're actually gorgeous. Here, I'll just show you one. Um, beautiful knives. They they did a lot of acid etching on their knives, and what's acid etching is uh, uh, you can see on that blade it has the uh, our best. And this is beautiful Barlow. Barlow's bringing some a lot of money, and th the reason why is because one of the first patterns that ever came out. Really nice knives. Nice back springs on them. Made in Germany. They're nice though. Oh, half stops, of course. Like I said, half stops were standard. Standard. It's just, every, almost every knife had one. It's, it's like I said, only recently where if you get a new knife, they don't have a half stop. Uh, let's see here. Um, we could, uh, this is an interesting one. Look at this one. Watch this. Here we go. Look at that. That's a little intimidating. You know? I'll bet you this isn't illegal in California. Really cool. This one's made really nicely. You got the splotchy handle, so I'm thinking this is a case XXUSA. Yeah. It's the early 70s. Nice thick blade. It's beautiful. Beauty, beauty. So, you really got to pay attention to what years you're bidding on when it comes to eBay. If you ever have a question, you can always email me. Uh, email me the link, uh, not email me, but PM me the link of the eBay thing, and I'll tell you how much that knife is worth and what you should pay for it. Um, so, really cool. These are not all case knives. Some of them are... Uh, uh, Keen Cutters. I got a, lot, a nice pearl collection. Uh, Bruckman is another nice nice company. There's so many different companies out there that people don't know about and the, the quality of their knives are far, excuse me, far superior to case knives. Um, so that's the fun thing about uh, collecting is that you you run into these these knife companies and you're like my goodness the, the quality of this is just incredible 
but nobody really knows about it. So you can pick those knives up for a really nice price. Uh, Bruckman is a uh, very good example of that. Uh, but gorgeous. I'm a real fan of the Tony Bow series. The cheapest Tony Bow series that you can pick up is the, actually the first one that they made. And if you want a nice trapper, you can pick these up. I found them for $150. And this is probably one of the nicest knives that they ever made. And it is beautiful. Look at that blade on that. It's got that nice swedge on it. Everything lines up perfectly. Real husky. Very nice knife. Um, they did a wonderful job on it. They produced a lot of the first ones. And this is, I think, 2000 they started these. And it is a beauty. Look at the bone on that. Oh, half stops? Of course. Like I said, standard. See? Added safety feature. Plus you can close with one hand. Beautiful knives. Beautiful, beautiful. So I'm a very big fan of case knives. So I don't like to hear anybody say anything different, but that's just life. That's what people on YouTube do. Um, these are the GCs. What makes GC so wonderful? I'm just going to hit on that really quick. GCs are made the way case knives used to be back in the 70s. They use those the same machinery. Basically, if you ever took a tour of the GC factory, they use the older machines. The, the, the factory itself, it looks like the whole factory is an antique, um, at least the machines they use. And they make some really wonderful knives there. Um, I've already done GC videos, but if I could recommend any new manufacturer now, if you want the old style knives, uh, GEC is it. They really make some nice ones. Um, so I can highly recommend those knives to everybody. Especially their lockback. Look at that. Look how thin that is. Perfect for your pocket. Very nice blade. Razor sharp. Gorgeous knives. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Just beautiful. So, neat. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. <clears throat> Hope this explains something. Uh, stick with the 70s. Go on eBay. Pick yourself up a nice knife. If you're going to buy a new case knife, get to know a dealer. Have him visually check that knife before he sends it to you. Um, or go to a store and handle the knife yourself. See if it has that snap that, that we all like. Um, so that's just unfortunately what you have to do. The older knives already have a look over. The older knives were made by artisans that would not let that knife go down the assembly line without it being perfect. These days, uh, I, I just don't understand how some of these knives can make it past uh, the people that are doing the finishing touches on them. And they do have a finishing station in the case factory now. So it's just something to think about. Um, and uh, that's about it. This will wrap up the uh, part two.